Okay, lesson 2.4, writing linear equations. Wouldn't it be great if I could just put that on the board and say we're done, we've written a linear equation. Uh, yeah, you know it's not going to be that simple. Okay, basically all this screen boils down to is just a review of slope and oh, slope-intercept form. Okay, quick review. This is your slope. This represents your y-intercept. This is your x-value. This is your y-value for any point along that particular line. Yep. Point slope form. And once again, this should look familiar from somewhere. This came out of Algebra 1. This is the second time you've seen it. In fact, it might even be a little bit more than that. y minus y1 equals slope x minus x sub 1, I guess I should say. What is this? This is my slope. What is this? This stays your y value. This is your x value, kind of like the points on the graph. So when you see y equals mx plus b, the y and the x are the points anywhere along that line. These are the points that you're putting in here. Okay, so you will substitute in for this one and this one. These stay put. All right. Write an equation in slope-intercept form for the line that satisfies each set of the conditions. All right, first one, slope is 3, y-intercept is negative 6. So guess what we get to do? We get to put it in slope-intercept form. This is as simple as they come. y equals, remember how this y stays here? The slope is 3, the b, which is your y-intercept, is negative 6. You can write plus negative 6 if you would prefer. Done. Slope, 0.25 or 1 fourth, passes through the point 0, 4. All right. Now, this is the book does, I'm going to show you two ways. If this was the first time I ever taught it to you ever, then I wouldn't show you two ways. But since you've seen this before, it should be somewhat familiar I'm going to show you both ways. Here's what the book wants us to do on this type of problem. And this is wonderful. They want it in slope-intercept form. This is the fastest, I think. Y value is 4. Your slope is 0.25. Your X value is 0. Put parentheses to say it's multiplied. Plus B. Well, I don't know B. So I'm going to keep it to B. I'm going to solve for b. Well, this is 0. How nice is that? So b is equal to 4. So now what do I have? I have my slope. I have my y-intercept. I can now write it in slope-intercept form. y equals mx, which is slope times x, plus the y-intercept. We're done. <sighs> now, here's my other way. Write them both down, and then after this, you can choose which one to write down. I think, what's the point of teaching point slope form if we're not going to use it? Here's your point. Here's your slope. Let's go with point slope form. Y minus the Y value, which is 4. Remember, this Y stays here. Equals slope, which is 0.25. And then you have X minus the X value, which is 0. The problem with this right now is this statement says it has to be in slope-intercept form. Well, I can make it slope-intercept form. I have to get it into y equals mx plus b. So y minus 4, I just do the math, take 0.25 times x. 0.25 times 0 is just 0, so I'm not going to bother writing down 0. But now I have to go ahead and add 4 to both sides. So I have 0.25x plus 4. Oh, that's slope-intercept form. Oh, it looks like the same kind of answer that I did over here. You get to pick whichever one you like better. I have to say, though, if you're randomly going to ask me a question out of the blue, if at the end of the chapter, I personally am going with this right here because I have a point, I have a slope. My mind thinks point-slope form because I have a point and a slope. I don't know about this. I can do it this way. And if you request it all, I'll do that. Example two, write an equation in slope-intercept form for the line that has a slope of negative three-fifths and passes through the point five, negative two. Here we go. I'll do both ways. You only have to write one of the two down. <clears throat> all right, y equals mx plus b. Sub in what we know. 
We've got a y value of negative 2. Where am I taking it from? Right here. I've got a slope of negative 3 fifths. Sorry, that kind of got cut off. The x value is 5. So I put a 5 right here, plus b. Don't know b. Solve for b. Negative 3 fifths times 5. The 5 actually cancel. I got a negative 3 plus b. Now I'm going to go ahead and add 3 to the other side. I got a 1. I got b equals 1. Rewrite it in slope intercept form. y equals negative 3 fifths x plus 1. We're done. The other way, my preference when you see a point and a slope is to write y minus y1, which actually is plus 2, slope, actually write the number here, three, negative 3 fifths, x minus the x value, which is 5. Now I just got to do some math. y plus 2 equals negative 3 fifths x. This times this, because I'm distributing. Fives actually cancel, and negative times negative is positive, and I have a 3 there. Should I show you? I'm going to show you. Negative 3 fifths times 5 is actually negative 5 over 1. Fives cancel, negative times negative is positive, gives me a 3 over 1, which is why I'm writing a 1. Still not done, have to be, it has to be in the form of y equals mx plus b, so I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, y equals negative 3 fifths x plus 1. Woo! Same as over here. I don't, it's about the same amount of steps. Maybe you get to pick. I'm going to let you pick. Example 3. Here's your chance. Here you've got a slope. I'm just going to clarify that's 2 thirds. Here's your point. You do whichever way you like better. You're on your own in example 3. Example 4. I'm going to do... I, uh, an equation will line through this point and another point. So this one's a little different. They don't give you a point and a slope. They've only given you a point and a point. But wait a minute. We can find slope. Huh. How do we find slope from two points? You have your choice. Once again, maybe too many choices. This nice little formula. You can graph it, which I'm sure we all kind of want to avoid doing that. Change in y over change in x. Here I go. Can I, uh, this is my y value. Here's my other y value. So I've got negative 3 minus 7. Since I started here, I've got to start here. 2 minus negative 3. What do I do when I see minus negative? Oh, the horrible math teacher thing I should never do, but I just write a big plus sign over the top of it. My slope is now negative 10 over 5, which reduces to negative 2. So I have a slope of negative 2. Uh, what do I have to do? I have to write the equation of a line. Sneaky, they do not say what kind of an equation, do they? If I give that to you on a quiz or a test and I don't say what kind, then I will take it in any form. Point slope form, slope intercept form, or even standard form. So whichever works easiest for you. I think this is for sure, I think I would write this in point slope form and then I would just leave it. Here's the thing, some of you might love this point, some of you love this point. Uh, do I want to do it both ways? Maybe I'll move really fast. Here I move with this point first. y plus 3, because it's minus negative, equals the slope, which is negative 2. The x value, which is x, minus the 2. Okay, I could be done right there. Somebody else could write using the other point. y minus 7 equals slope, negative 2, and then I have x plus 3, because minus of the negative. Here's the cool thing. If I were to switch this into slope-intercept form, which I'm going to do really, really fast. You don't have to write this down. You can just watch. Okay? Um, subtracting 3, I get a plus 1. If I do that over here, I get y minus 7, negative 2x minus 6. y equals negative 2x, and then we add 7, I get a 1. Notice how they're both the same. Okay? I just wanted to show you that once. Please realize if it says an equation, it just needs to be a linear equation in one of those three forms, unless I specifically say it has to be a certain one. Okay, once again, here's another one. What's an equation? Doesn't matter which form. What do I have to do? I have to find slope first. Okay, 5 minus 3 over 2 plus 1. 5 minus 3 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. Got my slope. 
Does it matter which form? No, I'm going with this one because it has less negatives. It seems like I'm less likely to mess it up. Y minus 5 equals slope 2 thirds x minus 2. You could leave it like that. I'm going to leave this one like that and move on. Okay, example six. As a part-time salesperson, Jean's stock is paid daily salary plus commission. When her sales are $100, she makes $58. When her sales are $300, she makes $78. Write a linear equation to model the situation. All right, so I'm going to put it as points. When she makes, or when the sales are $100, she makes $58. So this is like the money that she makes. Profit. I don't know if that's profit. Yeah, it must be. When her sales are $300, she makes 78 bucks. Change in y over change in x. So my slope is 78 minus 58 over 300 minus 100. So I got 20 over 200. So we have 2 over 20, which is 1 tenth. Or I could put point 0.1. Do I have an equation yet? No. I need to go ahead and pick a point and use point slope form. Y minus 58 equals slope point 0.1 x minus the x value is point 0.1 x. A tenth times 100 comes out to be a 10 like this. Then I go ahead and add 58 to both sides. If I add 58, I actually get a 48. Okay, there's my equation. I guess I didn't have to switch it into slope intercept form, but I went ahead and did because I knew on this next one right here, the slope intercept form is given. That's where that comes from. It's just not random. What are Mrs. Stock's daily salary and her commission rate? Now, here's the part that we need to put this all together. This is what she's given every day. This is like come to work and work it. She gets the 48 bucks. That's pretty great. But point one, this is she makes 10% basically of everything she sells. Okay, I don't know if you know how commission works. You basically, you make a percentage on what you sell. If you're selling shoes, oftentimes it's like that. Car salesmen, uh, selling houses, you make a certain percent of what you sell. Um, yeah, we should have a whole discussion about it in class. Uh, how much would Jean make in a day if her sales were $500? So she sells $500 worth of, what is she selling again? I don't remember. It doesn't even say. Let's just say shoes. She sells $500 pairs of shoes. Um, probably, that's only five pairs of shoes maybe. 500 times 10% is 50. Then you add in the 48. Okay, this is 500 times 0.1 is 50. And that's equal to the total amount. So y is equal to 98. So she would make $98 that day if she were to sell 500 bucks, which might maybe sounds good to you guys. I don't know. Write an equation for the line that passes through the point 3, negative 2, and is perpendicular to the line whose equation is y equals negative 5x plus 1. So let me remind myself that this is going to be a perpendicular. What is the slope of this line? Right now it's negative 5. What do I have to do? I have to find the perpendicular slope. Isn't that the opposite sign? So it's positive. The reciprocal of 5 is 1 fifth. Okay, so the perpendicular slope is 1 fifth, and it has to pass through this point. Point, slope, point, slope. I think we should use point slope form. Y minus Y1. Well, in this case, the Y value is negative 2, so the opposite is plus 2. The slope is 1 fifth. And then I go x minus my x value, which is 3. And that doesn't look very much like a 5. I don't know if that improves it or not. And it just says write an equation. Great. This will work, and I'm going to leave it. Example 8. Now it's the same kind of idea, except now it has to be parallel. So what's the slope of this right now? 3, because the slope is next to x when it's in slope intercept form. What's parallel? Slope 3. I don't even have to bother writing that. Here's my point. 3, 5. I'm going to let you finish it. Put an equation. Doesn't matter what kind of an equation. You've got your point. You've got your slope. Go to town.
and we're done.